It's time we tackle this. I've been avoiding the S13 ever since I started regular car reviews, and there's no avoiding this car anymore. Listen up, the S13 is for going hard. You see, S13 owners don't close doors. They slam them. They don't take a leak. They take a pass. They don't drink beer. They chug, 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 chug. Choke. They don't have sex. They go balls deep. They don't exercise. They get swole. They don't have disagreements. They throw down. No one sits on a bar stool like you sit on a bar stool. Nobody drinks like you drink. No one cruises harder than you do. No one represents harder than you do. No one parks harder than you park. Uh, no one scowls like you scowl. No one frowns like you frown. No one stands by their car after using the self-service car wash like you stand by your car after using the self-service car wash. S13, the reason your sister's going to Planned Parenthood. An unorthodox exhaust And body is Japanese fox Cause everybody wants the GDM We have a double review today. Here is a 1989 USDM S13 or Nissan 240SX. And here is a 1989 JDM S13 or Nissan Silvia. These two cars, both the same car, but meant for different countries. First up, our United States domestic marketed Nissan 240SX. Look at it. <sighs> This is what we, in the United States, have come to recognize as the S13, or 240SX. Coilover, wide, cambered wheels, stretched tires, unorthodox exhaust, A-pillar pods, detachable steering wheel because race car. Now why is this? Why are all 240SXs represented like this to us in the US? All 240SXs are all... You know why? Because of the best platform to do that. They exist that way because they can. The 240SX is a platform. You can do anything you want with it. Real fart. Look at this magnificent engine bay. Anything can go in here. And many things often do. This isn't the original engine meant for the 240, but we'll get to that later. You can drop a GM crate engine in here, and many people do. You can drop a coyote motor in here, and many people do. You can put all sorts of rotary engines in here. And people do. What is the 240SX? It's the Japanese Fox body. It's a platform on which you build. This is Dan's 240SX. And here is the big long list of most of the stuff that's done to this car. Engine is now the SR20 dual overhead cam with electronic fuel injection. It has a T28 ball bearing turbo from an S15. It has HKS rocker arm stoppers, an S15 water neck, an alternator from a Nissan Quest, HKS super sequential blow off valve, Gretti front mounted intercooler, Z32 fuel filter, Filter. The battery was moved to the rear. It has circuit sport brake rotors, EBC yellow pads, stainless steel brake lines, TN tie rods. It has ISIS Pro HR coilovers with tension rods and tow arm, a Z32 differential, Alutech struck braces, and these seats are from an S14. His homemade upswept Bozuku mispronunciation exhaust tips are uniquely functional because they house the baffles. If Dan removed the tips, this machine would become noise violation loud. Oh, but now it's time for the Sylvia. Behold, pearl white paint with that gold beige undertone for the lower third. It has turbo motif Nissan wheels, which are very similar to the Toyota AW11 supercharged model. It's right hand drive, of course, and I'm not joking. This has a factory heads up display. That was a Nissan option in 1989. Everything about this Sylvia S13 is stock, including the carpets, which have a metal Sylvia plate riveted into the fabric and speakers, which bear the good intention borderline English phrase, pro acoustic equalizer sound. Oh, Japanese inspection sticker and Japanese export sticker. And a note marked on the window from a Japanese import export inspector. I don't know who he is, but I'll bet he takes pride in his thorough work. Ha <laughs> ha! Positive racism! Oh, look at the odometer. 68,493 kilometers. That's 42,560 miles. This is a Sylvia from 89, and it has under 50,000 miles. Now the engine, which is much smaller than the SR20 in Dan's car. This is a CA18DET, which is a 1.8 liter turbo, with only 7 
7 pounds of boost with a factory viscous limited slip differential in the rear. Okay, quick rundown on Nissan codes. Nissan, everybody should take a, a note from Nissan. Nissan makes engine codes the easiest to understand about all of them. The original Nissan S13 240SX in the United States originally had a KA24E single cam. KA denotes the engine style. 24 represents the displacement. And so it just says E for just electronic fuel injection. Just single cam. And then there was the KA24DE. You had a D there that stands for dual cam, 2.4 liter, which was the higher trim, 240SX in the United States. Now Dan's car originally should have had the KA24DE, but he took that engine out for the SR20DET. And it's 20, means it's a smaller displacement engine. D for double cam, E for electronic fuel injection, and then the T on the end of it for turbo. See how easy that is? So Dan went down in displacement to go up in boost and rev happiness. And plus, the sr 20 DET fits perfectly into the USDM cars. For reference, the SR20 DET is a JDM engine. They never offered a 240SX, or rather if they offered it here, it wouldn't be called the 240SX anymore. It would have been called the 200SX. Anyway, listen to the differences between these two cars. Here's Dan starting up. And here's the JDM S13 starting up, the Sylvia. Dan's car is savage, but well-tuned. It is quick, and it turns really nice. Oh, there he is. Ooh, get him. Get him. Corey's Sylvia is more refined. The turbo is very small, and it only produces seven pounds to begin with, so it's very quick to come on boost and stay on it. And really, when you drive this, the engine is so lively, even for being a 1.8, you never tire of it. We're so used to seeing the S13 presented as this savage, lower cast, horrible brute. An annoyance for anybody who has to work for a shit. But listen to this. It's quiet. It's nice. And then I have to get used driving from the right hand side, because it's not just the steering wheel that's out of place. Oh, it, it pulls nice in the mid-range. Yep. And those <laughs> are... I did it! I did it! I did it! Jenny, no problems, man! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club, homie. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. <laughs> because it doesn't make any noise. It's 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 a little bit of the it has the same unexpected pull that a, a little bit of a Grand National because Grand Nationals aren't that loud. Mm -hmm. And this isn't all that loud. So this one goes Whoa. and that turbo spills up. Ah! <laughs> Number two. Ah! And it would be right to as well thank Corey and his company, Street Legal JDM. He's an importer. He abides strictly by the 25-year rule. Archaic as it is, all you have to do is tell him what kind of car you want, agree on a budget, and then he'll go find you one for you. It'll arrive with a Virginia title, and you just go pick it up. That's it. The SR versus KA motor debate started in 1990 and has become the Gaza Strip of engine arguments. But please, can we stop destroying S13s? The amount of dedication and money it takes to tune an S13 approaches tune Corvette status. Look, the Scion FRS has its arms outstretched to take the drift missile torch. Please just let it have it and finally retire the S13. But it's going to be tough because the S13 is so adaptable to the modern age. It's the grandpa that still gets speeding tickets. He's always relevant, just like the S13 is always relevant. This is a classic car now. Both of these are classic cars, and they don't look at it at all. The S13. Man, you annoy me sometimes, but you're always rolling with the changes. I don't go on Facebook these days. What's the purpose? More back gen and airport terminal and drama on the surface. But if you're selling your Sylvia on your group page, name your prize. I got that legal JDM bitch to scratch, though it might be those half past time I owned a nice ride time to get inside of one and live my life oh it's half past time